Folks, welcome to Top Stocks for the new trading week. We're going to go over five symbols this week. The first chart up will be Align Technology, symbol ALGN. The next will be IDEX Pharmaceuticals, stock symbol IDXX. The third symbol will be the Invesco Agriculture Fund, ticker symbol DBA. We'll also talk about rent -a center ticker symbol RCII. And we'll leave off with Shake Shack, symbol S-H-A-K. Now, what we're going to talk about with these symbols today are going to be the charts, the technicals. And we'll answer the question at the back half of the video, do I believe that each of these symbols is either A, an investment, meaning a trade to be held for greater than a couple of months, or is it simply a swing trade? A trade to be held for several days to several weeks. And to kick things off, I'm going to talk about performance. How did we do last week? How did our portfolio as a whole do last week? What did we book profits in? And what did we lighten up on? But before we go to that, let's talk about this evening, Sunday Night Futures Live, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Use the link below to get a 15-minute alert. All you need to do is... Enter your email address. We hate spam too. You'll not be spammed. If you're already on our email list, do not enter your email address again. Again, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live. Click that notification bell as well. Subscribe and share with a friend. Leave a comment. So let's kick things off with performance last week. How did we do? Well, we had a, a very, very good week last week. And this is our performance page on our website. Now, the first thing that's going to pop out to you is Rocket Mortgage. There was a loss there of 14%. Keep in mind that these are opening positions, meaning we did not have a very large position. We tested the waters. It wasn't working out. Therefore, we lightened up on half of our position. We're still long of Rocket Mortgage. We're looking to build, but only when we see signs of strength on the charts. Right now, it's still floundering a bit, but we remain optimistic. The next chart up was U.S. Steel. We traded U.S. Steel. As a matter of fact, this is the second time we had booked profits on U.S. Steel. We opened up a position on July the 14th of this year. We booked profits on the 18th of September. Our entry price was $7.36. Our exit price was $8.98 for 22.01% gain on that trade. We exited because the shares became overbought. We knew there was going to be a pullback. Then we re-entered on the 22nd of September. After the shares did pull back, our average basis cost was $7.47, about a dime more than where we had our initial opening position back in July. And as the shares rallied last week, we decided, because we were overweight this position, we decided to take half of our profits off the table we sold at $8.56 for a 17 spot, 26% profit. We also booked profits last week on our utilities trade. We opened up the position on August the 20th, 2020. We booked profits on the 6th of October for a little over 9.5% gain. Now, these, these are not all of our positions. The rest of our positions did quite well. You'll note that we did book another profit last week of the GDXJ. A little over a 7% gain. We're still long of the GDXJ. And we will we'll be looking to rebuild on strength. Or at a support level where we believe that we'll be re-entering the trade at a strong risk-reward entry point. So that was our performance last week. A very good week. Despite the fact you saw Rocket Mortgage down 14%. Small opening position. We cut our losses. Moved to the sidelines. Now we're looking to rebuild. These two positions here, U.S. Steel and GDXJ, not so much the UTSO, but these two positions were much larger positions than Rocket Mortgage. So net-net, a very strong week last week. Let's get to the charts of the symbols that we're watching for the new trading week. We'll be using TrendSpider. TrendSpider is the next generation in charting software using automated technical analysis and artificial intelligence to help you automate your technical analysis by a click of a button, as I'm going to do here using the trend lines on a monthly basis. Click of a button, and there you have it, folks. It's as simple as that. Now, 
we're going to begin align technologies off. Oh, by the way, there's a link below, 35% discount code off of TrendSpider. Back to Align Technologies, we're going to use a multi-time frame approach, beginning with a monthly chart, drilling down to a weekly chart, and again with members. Go to the members area to see the week ahead commentary, where we review the health of the overall markets. How do we close last week? What's our strategy for the new trading week? And how do we plan on entering the symbols I'm about to go over? What our stop loss point will be as listed on the watch list page, target prices, and stop loss points. So go check it out. Align Technology Monthly Chart. Okay, so we use the automated trend lines, click of a button. You can see that we broke out here the month of June 2020, and it's been off to the races ever since. This month so far, we don't have a new monthly high, but we are well off the lows of the month. The indicators are still very strong. Stochastics moving up higher, RSI breaking out, flattening out a little bit, but it's still early in the month. Weekly chart. Now, on a weekly basis, you can see that we're consolidating very nicely. And if we throw up our automated trend lines with a click of a button, here we can see what we're dealing with. We have resistance immediately above. So what I would want to do here is one of two things or a mixture of both. One, I would want to set an alert for a breakout above this upper band of resistance and not just a intra-period, meaning an intra-week breakout. I want to see it close above this resistance level on at least a daily time frame. Not flirt with it, then fail. And you may see I have written here, long entry, open or add. What do I mean by that? Well, ideally, we get a pullback to a support level, which we'll talk about in a moment. But what if that doesn't happen and the shares continue to move higher? Well, I want to get notified if and when we do break out and above this upper band of resistance. And then we'll begin to watch it a bit more closely to ensure that we close out either the day or ideally even better, the week above this resistance level. Because you always take the risk of if you buy it prior to a close above resistance of the shares fading on you and basically giving you a head fake breakout. And you want to avoid that. Now, at what price point would I ideally like to get involved with Align Technologies. There are several, but I'll share with you the one that is really the pimp Mac daddy of them all. And that's right down here, right at 287.91 or 288 to round it up, right where you have this volume shelf. That would be a very attractive risk reward entry point for me. Why? It's because I know vis-a-vis -vis these volume by price bars and from what the chart is telling me is that we have a lot of support below that price point. So from a risk-reward perspective, very, very attractive. So what we'll do here is create an alert, and we'll keep this active for 10 days. The reason is, is that it's a lot to ask for for these shares to pull back to that support level. Now, the market volatility of late has been significant. We have an election coming up, which is only going to rile the markets up even more than what we've seen. So there may be an opportunity on an intraday pullback for this alert to fire off. If it does fire off, we want to be positioned to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, our stochastics on a weekly basis, very strong. RSI, very strong. So my conclusion of as to whether or not Align Technologies is an investment or a swing trade, I think it's both. Let's go back to the monthly chart because on a monthly basis, this is the macro breakout. And we are within striking distance of putting in new all-time highs. If we do that, well, that means that there's no overhead supply above, no sellers looking to get made whole. So I think that on a breakout above where we have this alert set and we retest that support level next month, I think that it can be considered an investment, but it can also be considered a swing trade, especially if we pull back Weekly chart, again, if we pull back and this alert fires off here, that's a great risk-reward entry point, and then I would look to trade it up to where we have our alert set at the upper band of resistance. I would look to book profits into that resistance level, then wait and see if we break out or do we fail yet again. So that's how I would trade Align Technologies. I like it a lot, both as a swing trade and an investment.
Now let's talk about seasonality. Is this time of year favorable to opening up a new trade or adding to a position or holding a position in a line technology? Let's figure it out. Now with seasonality on TrendSpider, we can go back 19 years on a monthly basis, or if you were so inclined, you could drill down to the week of the year. We are right here, the 42nd week of the year. Or you could drill down to the day of the year. It's crazy, really great data. Or for that matter, the hour of the day. Amazing. But for our style of trade, we're going to stay high level. Monthly chart. And you could see that for Align Technologies, this is a seasonally favorable period of time being up 60% of the times and even getting better in November being up 74% of the times going back 19 years. That's a lot of data. Now let's talk about analysts and their opinions. And I really don't care about their opinions per se. What I care about are the numbers of sells and holds versus buys. Why does that matter? Well, if you have a whole bunch of sells and holds on the stock, the worst that they could do is reiterate their position and nobody really cares. The best that they could do is raise their guidance to a buy or an overweight. And you can see that there's an equal number of analysts on this with a bias mostly to the sell or hold side. And I view that as a positive because that can only influence positive headlines moving forward if and when they move off of their current rating and move to a buy. Now, yes, you have an equivalent number of analysts out there with a buy rating, so that could be a negative as well. But as long as these shares keep moving up, nobody wants to look bad, especially on Wall Street. So despite what their conviction is with regard to their fundamental analysis, they will toss their souls to the devil. If the shares keep moving up higher, they will change their opinion and move to a buy rating. So Align Technology is looking good from a longer term perspective. The next chart up is IDEX Laboratories, ticker symbol IDXX, monthly chart first. Now, at first glance here, we appear to be in a consolidation range, and we are in a consolidation range. There is one concern about this chart on a monthly time frame, and that's this. Let's use the automated trend lines. We have resistance not too far above. So from a risk reward perspective, we're going to have to be a little bit more strategic more tactical with entering this position. And I don't believe that a monthly chart is the chart to use to help time a trade. So let's drill down to a weekly view. This is a bit better. But what I want to do is I want to overlay on this weekly chart, I want to overlay, and this is what I mean when I say multi time frame analysis. This is an arrow in your quiver. I don't know of another piece of charting software that has this. You can overlay monthly support and resistance on a weekly chart using TrendSpider. And there you have it. Think about if you did not have this data. In dashed line is monthly resistance on a weekly chart. And what this chart is telling me, while it looks good, at this price point right here at 418 per share, warning Will Robinson, beware, there is resistance above. So do I want to be a buyer into this resistance level? No. What I want to do is I want to set my alert and I want to know when we break through and close above, more importantly, close above that resistance level. And we're going to keep this active because we're using a monthly resistance level. We'll keep it active for the remainder of the month or close to it. Now, might there be a entry point on a pullback on a daily chart? Yes, there could quite very well be. And I'll be reviewing that and discussing with members on Market Wrap tomorrow on Monday after the close. But at current, I'm looking for a breakout above monthly resistance. And I think our price target is a lot higher. We're looking at over $500 per share on IDEX Laboratories. Stochastics, very strong. RSI, very strong, higher lows. Moving on to seasonality. Data going back 19 years, the month of October is up usually 60% over that time frame, 53%. So a slight bias to the upside 
in the month of November and about the same in December. Now, January is the month to own IDEX along with April and July. So having this data at your disposal allows you to be far more strategic in your trading approach and it helps you minimize risk so you're maximizing reward. This is what we focus on. We have four analysts covering IDEX, all with buy ratings. And you can see here, it's funny. All of these guys, Credit Suisse, Stiefel Nicholas, Bank of America, they just upgraded the shares over the summer. Where were they back here in April? Where were they back here in December of 18? They're not using charts. They weren't watching the money flow. Were they? They would have captured this bullish reversal bar, a bullish engulfing bar, and they would have known you need to get long. But these guys are staring at spreadsheets. They need to be staring at charts. And leaving off with the daily chart of IDEX, do I believe that it's an investment or a swing trade to the long side? Definitely bullish on the name. I think that we have a very short-term swing trade up to that upper band of resistance on a monthly time frame. Let's overlay that again on the daily chart. I think there's a very strong chance that we rally up to 4.15 per share. But remember, that is stiff resistance up there. So short-term, it's a swing trade. On a close above 4.15 per share, it then becomes an investment. Moving on to the DB Agriculture fund symbol dba this is uh in my book a must own position and i'll share with you up front before we do our technical analysis this is a buy an investment why because folks we have a tremendous amount of federal reserve debt monetization in short we're financing this country on a credit card and it's not going to end well it has never ended well in the history of the globe, empires have fallen by doing that, and yet, history repeats itself yet again. What is the very definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over again and expecting a different outcome. That is what we are doing right now. And how will, how will failure of government manifest itself in the future? It will manifest itself in the collapse of the U.S. dollar and hyperinflation. What must you own during hyperinflation? You need to own goods. Anything that you drop on your foot and hurts, you should buy. You need to own foodstuffs, consumer staples, and this fund gets you to where you want to be. Now, this is a monthly chart, and I've been talking about this for quite a while now. We've just been looking for the setup, and I think we're very close at hand. Now, several months ago, I drew this line manually here. That's me. But when you overlay the automated trend lines, if you're not familiar with technical analysis, and I use this to validate my accuracy, you can see that I was fairly spot on. I caught the earlier breakout, but TrendSpider caught the secondary breakout. Now what we're looking for is a continuation move higher because the DBA Ag Fund has been a long-term bear market and it is still in a bear market. And it won't be in a bull market until we get a higher low and then a higher high. So this is still technically a speculative investment. So you want to stay small with opening positions and then add on strength. Add when the market tells you that you're right. Test, test, test. So the monthly chart, a clear breakout on a monthly basis. And I think that we could easily rally on a monthly time frame up to this primary upper band of resistance at around at current $16.25 per share weekly chart. Now on a weekly chart, we are very close to a breakout as measured by this consolidation here on the candlesticks and as measured by this volume shelf. There's been a lot of history here at this price. And so what we know is, is that should we break out and above this resistance level, well then, it's going to be game on with a continuation breakout on the DBA. Let's overlay our automated trend lines on a weekly time frame. 
And you can see that we had broken out here the week of August the 24th, and we've been consolidating ever since. This is very bullish stuff. Moving on to seasonality. Data going back 14 years, the month of October, very strong. The month of November, very weak. So be careful. We're almost through half of October. November, a very volatile month. December, not much better until we get to April. So a seasonally poor period of time after October. So this leads me to believe that this may be a short-term swing trade for the month of October. But if I want to make it a longer-term investment, I may want to look. I'm not sure if they sell options on this. But as a longer-term investment, I may want to sell covered calls against the position going out several months and on strike. That way I have a hedge on the position, but I don't lose all that much upside potential during a seasonally challenging period of time. So I would go out on those calls several months. Members, we'll talk about that when the time comes. There is no analyst coverage because it is a fund. The next chart up is rent -a center This is one where we discussed entering a position last week the however here is that it got away from us and i didn't want to go chasing it but i still like it you can see i have an alert that was triggered last week but i opted to be a bit cautious and not chase it do i regret it no because that's served me well over the course of time by not getting emotional about a stock so what we'll be looking for now is a pullback and a retest of this breakout point Unless I find a support level on a weekly time frame or in a daily time frame that is more favorable to me. Now, keep in mind that we like rent to center because people are moving. They are leaving the cities. And when they leave the cities, they want to sell their property. Well, they need to stage that property. When they move into a new home, maybe they want to rent furniture for a while while they're fixing up their home. So thus far this month, we have broken out above prior highs, new monthly highs. We are not at all-time highs, and we do have overhead resistance above. Let's overlay the automated trend lines. And there you have it. Click of a button. We know that right around here at around $35, $36 per share, there is resistance. Now, moving on to a weekly chart, you can see that last week we had a breakout week. Beautiful. I would be interested in purchasing the shares on a pullback and a retest of weekly support which is also the monthly breakout point. We'll create an alert here, touch or bounce, leave a little bit of sensitivity, and it is a long entry point. Moving on to seasonality, data going back 19 years, the month of November, very, very strong, as is evidenced by the share price this month, and December is very strong as well. It drops down in January, but picks back up in February. So another situation where where you decide to become an investor in the shares, you could look to sell January covered calls at a higher strike price. That way you capture as much upside potential as possible. But if you're a swing trader, I would not go selling covered calls. Stick with your game plan. Identify a resistance level at which you want to exit the trade and then exit appropriately. Stick with your game plan. Let's overlay some weekly trend lines. You can see that we have resistance above at around $36 per share. We're in an ascending wedge formation. So where I would be also interested in adding to my position is on a breakout above this upper band of resistance. I want to build on strength. If the market's telling me my initial inclination was accurate, meaning the share price is moving higher after my initial purchase, well, why not buy more if it's able to overcome an obstacle at resistance? We'll keep that active for the next week. And it's set and forget it. Here's our lower band of support. I want to know when we hit the support level, TrendSpider will send me out a text and an email notifying me of this support level getting hit or if we manage to break out above this upper band of resistance. Until one of those alerts gets fired off, I'm not even going to look at this chart again. It's a rules-based approach. Minimize risk, maximize reward. Analyst ratings. Is there a headline opportunity here? Not much. We have a couple of small firms with holds on it. Maybe they'll go to a buy. 
And if anything, I'm a little bit concerned with uh, analysts here. Stiefel has been on point. They reiterated their buy rating back in April after, after initiating back in November of 2019. As the share price accelerates, if earnings do not follow, be careful because they can move to a sell rating or a hold rating, basically the same. So no contrarian indicators here that would have me more bullish due to analysts focusing too much on balance sheets rather than focusing in on where the money's flowing using stock charts. Shake Shack, this is another one I covered last week on best stock charts for the coming week, and it broke out. It popped up higher last week, and we're going to use the same strategy with Shake Shack as I just laid out with rent -a center We will not chase the shares. We know where there's support right at this breakout point at 69.24. Let's overlay support and resistance levels on a monthly basis using automated trend lines. Really nice. Not much in terms of overhead supply above. It's always good stuff. Now, are we without resistance? No. There was resistance right where we closed last week. Let's drill down to a weekly time frame right at 72.49. And there you have it. Weekly time frame. You can see. This is the value of using multi-time frame analysis. Understand where the stock has been to identify where it might be going. So with the knowledge now of knowing that I have resistance immediately above, will I be buying on Monday? No. I want to see the shares come to me. We're going to set up our alert. So I, I want to know when we touch or bounce support, which happens to also be the breakout point and should be a very strong support level. I've noted that it's a weekly time frame. The reason why I note that it's a weekly time frame is because it's more significant than a daily support level. There's a lot more history there. It's a long entry. We'll keep it active for five days. We're good to go. I want to know when we hit that support level and or if we break out. Now, I'm going to use a four-hour alert, and I'll tell you why in a moment. This only fires off twice per day. The reason why that we're using a four-hour time frame to get alerted and not a 10-minute, meaning it crosses above, let's say, 72.91, and alert fires off. I really don't care if it happens at 9.30 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, 2 o'clock. I don't care. What I care about is, are we poised to close above it? You could also set this up as an hourly alert, so you're alerted at the 3 p.m. time frame that Shake Shack has broken out and above an upper band of resistance, and you watch it, that final hour of trade. Then those final minutes... If you're just barely above resistance, wait. Wait for the final minutes of trade to ensure that you don't have some big hedge fund dumping a ton of shares in the final minutes of trade, taking it down below that support level. You're not going to feel good about yourself. You never want to see your opening position fade into the close. It's happened to me all too often. You want to use the final hour of trade as the point at which you open up or add to new trades. Unless you're momentum trading stocks, that are under huge accumulation. They're owned by the street, meaning a lot of hot money chasing them, but you should be using a trailing stop loss order on those trades. So Shake Shack, at current, it's a swing trade only. Might it become a longer term investment? Yeah, but we need to break out and above 72.49 for that to be the case. Moving on to seasonality, November, one of the top months of the year for Shake Shack, as evidenced by the chart. But keep in mind that December is by far the weakest month of the year for Shake Shack. It recovers in January. So this also reinforces my opinion that at current, this is only a swing trade. I'd want to look to make this an investment in December where I get a good risk-reward entry point. And I also have the knowledge that for the first two quarters of 2021, it's a seasonally favorable period of time. Analyst ratings, I love this. You may be saying, what this, is this guy talking about? You only have seven analysts with a buy rating, and then you have 35 analysts with a hold or a sell rating, both which are pretty much the same. Why do I like this? Look at all of these banks, these well-dressed, suspender-wearing Slick back salesmen. They're about to get made the fool of. We're about to break out, and they're sitting here 
with sells and holds, what are they going to be forced to do? They're going to be forced to move to a buy rating. This is the wind at your back. A lot of potential positive headlines coming out on Shake Shack. Folks, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and join us tonight. Sunday Night Futures Live, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Use the link below. Enter your email address to get notified 15 minutes prior to us going live. You can also hit the notification bell. That sometimes doesn't work. And when it does work, it only tells you when I go live. So you'll probably be joining in late. We hate spam too. Hope to catch you tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And everybody enjoy the remainder of your weekend and have a very profitable trading week. Be well.